the tattoos with a fist, has just been elected in Canada. He's the son of a moron named Trudeau. Trudeau was a playboy, an all-around useless idiot, who destroyed Canada with his liberalism and stupidity. Another golden boy. Ruined Canada. Now all of a sudden, the son is, is now elected. Why was he elected? Because he's got a good body and he's got tattoos. So now what does he want to do? The first thing this idiot in Canada says he wants to do is save the environment. He wants to talk about carbon. Another genius. Another moron doesn't even know what carbon is. He has the, the scientific literacy of Al Sharpton. Well, how can you say that? He's got... A, he's got a 10-pack on his stomach, and he's got a tattoo on his left shoulder, and he's a boxer. He must be smarter than everybody else. Well, if you're a fan of the American media, I guess you can grade someone's intelligence by the tightness of their stomach and the number of uh, tattoos that, uh, uh, that are on their skin. So the fact of the matter is, this is what the idiot's talking about, carbon and bringing in more refugees. I swear to you, he wants to bring in more Syrian refugees into Canada. Can you believe this? You better believe it. The world is breaking up right in front of your eyes. Now, the question is, why are liberals so quick to embrace this invasion? And why are traditionalists and conservatives like myself so resistant to erasing the borders, language, and culture of this great nation? Is it, is it a self-evident question? It's too complicated. It's not a classroom. I understand that. I'm speaking with you as though we're in a classroom, holding a seminar on, on the 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 um, crisis, the refugee crisis facing the world right now, because that's the number one crisis in the world. I know most of us don't think about it every day. We go about our daily business. Money, you know, family, kids, soccer, dentists, cancer, heart attacks, prostate difficulties, fallen arches, broken bones, broken teeth, hair falling out, psoriasis. I get the, I get the picture. So wherever you are, and I try to imagine where you are, I know where I am. I know that I, as an immigrant son, think only about the refugee crisis. And for one reason, as an immigrant son, I have to ask myself, I, of all people in the radio, I have to ask myself three times, why do I oppose relocating 100,000 Syrian refugees into this country? Why? Can you answer that question? Can you figure it out? And the embarrassing point is, is that people will always compare the situation to the Jews and the Holocaust. I mean, no, it's, it's the underlying motif of the entire liberal establishment. The underlying, the underlying, the substrata, rather, the substrata of this entire argument and the emotional substrata of this entire argument is based upon the Jews under Nazi Germany. It's a false argument. It's a false one on many levels. Many levels it's a false one. And I'm sure you can figure out why it's false and why the narrative is being used by those who want to flood America with refugees for their own reasons. Lutheran Family Services is doing it only for the greed. They're demanding 100000 because they make money off it. Baptist Family Services, they're doing it because they're greedy. They make money off it. Catholic Family Charities are doing it because they make money off it. So you could figure out what I'm saying to you. There's a lot of self-interest. There's a lot of greed. But the, the comparison to the Jews fleeing Germany in the Holocaust is a faulty analogy for a number of reasons, which I don't think I have to spell out to you unless you're that thick and you, and you really do think it's the equivalent of Jews running from the gas chambers, because it's not Jews running from the gas chambers at all. This is Muslims running for a better way of life at your expense, because the fact of the matter is, wherever they go, Take a look at it. Look at Sweden. Look at Norway. Look at Denmark. Look at Germany. Look at the trail of filth. Take a look at it. How can we take care of refugees when we have so many indigenous poor in this country right now? What, is everybody here rich? All of a sudden, the country is rolling in money? All of a sudden, Obama has cle cleared everything up and there are no poor in this country who need the help of the government? How in the world can you not see that there's something wrong with this picture? Now we have the issue of uh, tolerance. And, uh, many years I've preached how ultra-tolerance is killing us. I've told you that a hundred times. And we have a brainwashed generation of drug children raised on Adderall, marijuana, other toxic compounds, and outright brainwashing in the government schools where they believe in things that are false as though they are truths. They have no religion. Their religion is liberalism. 
And the doxies of uh, liberalism, I can give you the Ten Commandments of liberalism. I can make them up on the spot if you'd like. One, man is evil and poisoning the earth. Two, the earth is a living organism and needs to be protected. Three, all white people are racist. Four, all people of color are good. Five, all refugees should be allowed in. Six, there are uh, people make too much money. It should be taken from them. Uh, I can go down the list. All you got to do is listen to Bernie Sanders. And you can fill in six, seven, eight, nine, and ten commandments right there. And so you understand you have a brainwashed youth vote. You have a drugged youth vote. You have immigrants who want things for free that are being uh, legitimized in an illegitimate way. Jerry Brown, for example, in his criminal ways, has now allowed the Department of Motor Vehicles in California to automatically register illegal aliens so that they guarantee not a one-party system in California, which is what we already have, but a no-party system, just, a, just an autocrat, no party necessary, just an autocrat in Sacramento, an autocrat in, in, in Washington. So you're watching the dissolution of democracy itself under the guise of diversity. Diversity is destroying democracy. Very clear, isn't it? Do I make things clear enough for you? Diversity destroying democracy. It's a major theme in Government Zero, which, by the way, has gone to number one under politics on Amazon before its publication next Tuesday. It's already number one on politics, which means that people who are political want that book. We're talking about the swamping of Europe with Muslim refugees. The main question facing us is this question. Is diversity destroying democracy? Or as the liberals would argue, diversity in fact is making democracy stronger. Now until this time, I would say that diversity has made America great. The melting pot. Isn't that what we heard ever since we've been a child? The melting pot, the melting pot, the melting pot. And then all of a sudden, what happened was the melting pot became the chamber pot. We were no longer bringing in immigrants who wanted to lead a decent life and contribute to the country. We we're bringing in immigrants who did the opposite. They contributed nothing uh, except crime and disease, and they sucked the system dry. I'm not naming a particular group. You can put two and two together. You can attach a name tag to that particular uh, statement if you wish. So now we're at the verge of destroying the melting pot in a way it can never ever be healed by bringing in a hundred thousand Syrian refugees now you could argue that at least with the Hondurans and Guatemalans and El Salvadorans and Mexicans we see with our own eyes how hard they work the predominant number of them are family members and Catholics by the way just take that for what it is last night on my bicycle ride I saw at seven o'clock at night it was dark out here I saw a group of Mexicans still working on a construction site it had turned dark. They had no lights. They had to finish the pour of the concrete on steps. Six to eight of them were there working. I'm not blind, and I'm not deaf, and I'm not dumb. I see what's going on. So in that sense, you can argue that diversity is good for democracy up to a certain point now. Now we have quite another story. 100,000 Syrians. Who are these Syrians? Will they ever assimilate? Do they want to give to America, or do they want to take from America? Are any of them terrorists? Not allowed to ask the question? I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. I'm exposing for you and disclosing to you who's making money off the surge of illegal aliens and those coming in not only from Central America uh, and Mexico, in, in, in providing services. We know about the, the, the corrupt churches. We know how they've been corrupted under this regime. But then I listed the mutual funds. And if you have a mutual fund, you probably like the percentage you're making every year. But I want you to know which companies are profiting from the illegal alien surge. You may say that you're a conservative and against illegal immigration. Well, here are the mutual funds that hold GEO stock. Are you ready? Vanguard Specialized RET Index Fund. Fidelity Small Cap Discovery Fund, Prudential Genesis Equity Income Fund, Eagle Series Trust Small Cap Growth Fund, Vanguard Small Cap Index Fund, Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund. Do you get the picture? I'm not saying they're doing anything wrong, but you have to understand they're profiting from a political decision that you oppose. 
It's all on page 188 of Government Zero, in case you want to get that list again, because I'm not going to read it again. I'm just getting started. Who is this GEO group, board of directors, that are making billions off the illegal aliens living in luxury resorts? They're not household names. I won't read them to you. One of them is Norman Carlson, former director of the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Huh. I didn't know that. Let me pause right there, I say. The former director of the U.S. Federal Bureau of Prisons is on GEO's board? Well, think about that for a moment. And as I said, it's all perfectly legal. It's business as usual. Look how well they're doing. There are others. They all came to do good, and they did very well indeed. Again, these are not household names. But wait until you hear the punchline, because you haven't heard it yet. It's on page 189 of the only book you need this year, Government Zero. Are you ready? It's the Koch brothers, however you pronounce it. David and Charles, I used to call it Koch. K-O-C-H, David and Charles, who are two of the richest people in the world, are key funders of the American Legislative Exchange Council, ALEC. There you have it. You thought it was all liberals who wanted amnesty, but conservatives are also guiding forces behind the illegal immigration surge because they own facilities with thousands of unused beds, and they want you to fill them and pay for them. It is big business, big government, and big religion, all in one bundle and getting paid off your back. It is big business, big government, and big religion, all in one bundle, and they're all earning money off your back, all disclosed in the chapter, Zero Immigration and Government Zero. I close the chapter with the three pages on, can we get America back? I mean, I'm not going to read it to you, but I want to read one line. I'm not against immigration. I'm the child of immigrant parents myself. My mother was an immigrant. My father was an immigrant. Everyone living in this country is descended from immigrants, including the inappropriately named Native Americans. They aren't indigenous to America either. They came here from Asia. They just came before the Europeans. That's something else you probably didn't learn in school. Immigrants did help build this country into the greatest nation on earth. And I believe that every human being has a natural right to leave the country he or she is born in and seek a better life in another. Did you hear what I just said to you? But that right has the same natural limit that all rights have. Jefferson put it so eloquently when he said, the limits drawn around us by the equal rights of others. It means you do not have a right to immigrate to another country carrying a potentially deadly disease that could harm the people living there. You don't have a right to enter the country illegally and subvert its constitution. Most obviously, you don't have a right to immigrate into a country for the express purpose of killing its citizens or overthrowing the government. But yet this is precisely the kind of immigration our government is actively facilitating. 